It's Monday, December 25th, 2023, and this is episode 298 of You Can Bet on That. Hi, everybody. Welcome to You Can Bet on That, a podcast for the recreational gambler. I'm Mark Duvall. And I'm Dr. Mike. Merry Christmas, Dr. Mike. Yeah, same to you. It's right around the corner here, isn't you it, get, Mark? Yeah, well, we're going to be dropping this episode on Christmas Day, so if you're listening to this, as soon as we drop the episode, Merry Christmas. Mike, you got a white Christmas going your way? No, no snow here. Oh, okay. Yeah, we had one little snow, it stuck for about a day, and that was it. All right, well, it makes it a little bit easier to get around. Go to your yep. mother-in-law's house, right? Stuff like yep. that, or she coming yep. to your house, or whatever your plans are. Tomorrow she's coming to our house, and the next day we're going to hers. So. All right, excellent. There you go. Well, again, uh, Merry Christmas to everybody, and let's get on with the show. So, you know, Mike, I got a ton of fantastic free play from Harris Southern California in September mm-hmm. and October. Right. Uh, like, sort of, where did this come from? Like, August, it was nothing. I'd get like $20 a day, but I'd have to drive up there. It'd take me an hour to get up there. And then suddenly in September and October, they were throwing tons of money my way to the point where I went virtually every day to get free play money. And I knew about it because they sent these little mailers. They're like these little pamphlets that, you know, you kind of open up and it shows how much free play you got. You still get those, don't you? Every once in a while from them? Uh, Yeah, not every month. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Not every month. But I did get it for September and October and went up there. And then I stopped going because, you know, we were doing the move and everything was taking so much time. And I did not get little pamphlets for November or December. So I said to Sherry, let's head on up to Harris so I can see what my free play is currently. Because I wasn't getting any indication. And you can't tell online. It just says, you know, go to the property to find out or whatever. So we drove up there and I slid my card through. And it said that I had to earn 150 tier credits before I'd qualify for whatever the free play is. So, Which is quite a bit. That is a lot. That's like running $1,500 yeah. $1, through a video through, poker machine. Right, right. right. So, and, you know, if I were to do that, who know, it didn't say how much I was getting in free play. That was the other thing. It just said, you know, right. you have to earn this. And I suppose if I had gone up to the Caesars reward counter, they could have told me. But I was still thinking, $1,500 through video poker, I could lose more than I'm getting in free play (laughs) if I do that. Certainly the values that I've gotten in the past. So I turned to Sherry and said, well, sorry, this is a wasted trip. We did get, I had plenty of reward credits still, so we got some dinner and, you know, wasn't a completely wasted trip. But it seems like maybe they caught on. I know that I was not the only one doing this during those two months, right? I know a lot of people probably were. And again, I couldn't believe how generous they were being. So now maybe they finally decided, okay, we need to make sure that they're coming up to play. And not just a little bit. Sometimes we've gone up there and it says, earn five tier credits to get your reward. Well, that's no big deal. Five tier credits. Yeah, right. (laughs) But, you know, 150, okay, that's somebody who's going to have to play for a little while. And so... I'm surprised it took them this long to kind of come up with that, if that is what they've done. I assume it doesn't just apply to me, that it's applied to a lot of other players too, because there were not many people when we went up on a Wednesday. There were not many people there running their cards through the kiosks there. A lot of times, you know, you have to wait in line just to run your card, and, you know, nobody was doing it. So maybe it's a, a new policy, and it makes sense from their standpoint. They were certainly giving a lot to me, and I assumed other players as well. But there Yeah, you go. well, they probably had a meeting and said, hey, this didn't work out so well, <laughs> yeah. and your name came up. <laughs> That's and right. they, you know, uh, let's take this Mark Duvall, for instance. He came and ran his card through. It didn't play, and... You know, he got all this winnings from free play, and that's just not going to work. And they've been cussing you out ever since. And as I w- <laughs> continue to go up there and get the free play, I thought, yeah, I'm probably burning bridges here. Or they're going to see what I'm doing, and maybe they'll single right. me out, and I won't qualify for this in the future. But I didn't care at that point because they were giving me so much, and I go up there so much more infrequently now that you're not here that I said, I'm just going to milk it for right. all it's worth, and then that'll do it. They do these things. I mean, what do they think people are going to do? I guess they think that people are going to come and play 
and not just get their free play, which is what I did every time. I mean, there were some times when I'd play, but usually right. I'd go up there, run my free play through the video poker, maybe get a sandwich and then drive home. <laughs> so Right. It's a weird dynamic because first of all, you have to figure out how much do I have to give this person to get them to come here? Mm-hmm. Because like in your case, if it's too little, I mean, you're not driving all the way up right. there. So how far away you are from mm-hmm. the casino. Yeah, right. And then frequency of your visits, mm-hmm. you know, well, do they visit a lot or that has to be taken into consideration. And then it's like, well, what kind of player is this guy? Are they the kind that just can't resist? They're they're going to take it and just, you know, try and turn their, say, 50 bucks free play into a thousand or something or bust and go home. Or are they the kind of person who just come and get their 50 bucks and leave? Yeah, maybe so. they were just trying something for September yeah. and October. Because again, August, it wasn't worth it for me to go up, even once. Right. right. But then September was worth it for me every day. Maybe they were just experimenting and seeing what happens. But all Probably. Right. Or it could just be they're going out of business. And they said, God, maybe if we get Mark here, you know, when Tyson him with this, he'll get it, he'll play, then he'll be mad he lost, and he'll pull out another 1,000, and that really will save our casino. Yeah, maybe. The 6 to 5 blackjack just isn't doing it for us. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> they have to go to a triple zero, and then a four zero, and then they're going to have four zeros and a diamond. It's gonna, <laughs> Half the wheel's going to be zeros. That's what it's going to be. It's just, oh, you know, it happens 50% of the time. But the other 50%, you've got a 50% chance of winning. What? Right. 50-50, that's pretty good. (laughs) All right. We've beaten that to death. So we got an email from Mississippi Rob. Everybody knows great Mississippi Rob. He plans the Biloxi trips every year. But he was asking about betting the pass line versus placing the point. And he actually asked me to run some simulations because I've talked about how I use win craps to run simulations on craps. He was trying to lower his variance and his risk of ruin. And he asked me, can you compare betting $10 on the pass line and taking $10 odds versus just placing the point for $20? So again, in both cases, you'd have $20 at risk, but... Am I kind of reducing my variance if instead of going on the pass line and then taking 10 odds, I make a $20 place bet or a $20 buy bet if the point is 4 or 10? And we think about it, it's like, okay, yeah, because if he makes that $20 place bet, he's getting paid better than even money on that full $20. Whereas right. with just the pass line, you're only getting paid better than even money on the odds. Yes, mm-hmm. the odds are yep. a little bit better than a place bet, but you know the base bet on the pass line is only getting paid at even money. Right. So you know when I saw that, I thought, yeah, I'll run that simulation. I'm thinking to myself, okay, I certainly know the math. We've talked about how what's better, pass line, come bets, place bets. We're not going to say what's better because what does better mean? But we can say that mathematically, making a pass line bet or a come bet is better than making a place bet. So I ran these simulations. And it really wasn't even close. I sent you a copy of the email I sent Mississippi Rob, Mike. I don't think you've had a right. chance to look at it. But he basically asked me, you know, run a simulation on like a $200 bankroll, $300 bankroll, $500 bankroll. And in most cases, way more than, say, 75% of the cases, the person betting the place bets would lose their bankroll much sooner than the person doing the pass line with odds. And you know what it comes down to? It's that winning seven eleven. It's the winning seven eleven on the come out roll. You cannot right. ignore that. That is huge. I knew where that was going before you even said it's mm-hmm. gonna of course it's gonna be because yeah. you know how you get those rolls where some guy rolls three sevens on the come out or <laughs> right. rolls in a seven and an eleven and a couple more, you know, sevens. Well, if you're just sitting there watching that, that's forty dollars out of your two hundred bankroll that you lost out on, right? Right. And you could yeah. say, okay, well, what about when craps rolls? Yes, two, three, twelve, that's a loser. But there are only four ways to roll that. And right. there are eight ways to roll a seven or an eleven. Right. And yeah. it really is a significant difference. Especially over time. I mean, of uh-huh. course, yep. in a, yeah. you know, and if you're going to be there 10 minutes, of course, anything could happen. But Oh, um, anything can but, happen. And in some of my simulations, the place better did do better. 
just right, because that's right. the way the roles went, right? You know, right, but, right. And it you know, went so. favorably for yep. them. Yeah. Well, one of the things I like to do sometimes, I do not make a pass line bet and just place the point, you know, place all the numbers after the points established. And one of the reasons I do that, well, I guess the only reason is you get better rating. You definitely get a better rating. And I'll say this, and this is just due to the illness that you have, you mm-hmm. cannot not take full odds. No. So if you're like at a 20 times odds table and the yeah. minimum is $25, you are compelled to take that $500 odds bet. <laughs> Whereas right. if you make the place bet, oh, just 60 bucks, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, for me, it does two things. It gets me a better rating and it slows down my aggressiveness. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. But again, we're talking in Rob's example, we're talking about the same amount of money. In both cases, right? 20 versus 20. So, yeah. Right. (laughs) Well, it all boils down to like everything in life. Mark, it's a crapshoot. Exactly. It's a crapshoot. How do you enjoy playing? That's what we always say. And I enjoy playing in a way that makes my money last longer. And, you know, pass line and come bets, that is kind of the way to go. Thank you, Jack. You're on (laughs) Team Jack if you're betting that way. And I'm certainly uh, (laughs) that way. I hope Chris and Josh are listening. (laughs) <laughs> it does make it last longer, but you know, you get a little thrill, a little more of a yeah, thrill oh, when I'm you're not, up there yeah, on that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I love watching you win at the table, Dr. Mike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's almost as much fun as when I lose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> almost. Almost. Not quite, but almost yeah. as fun. Yeah. Almost as fun. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you how many uh, times, folks. Mike has looked over at me and, how are you up? I'm down like, <laughs> you know, two buy-ins. Yeah. <laughs> and then I chastise him for being up. Yeah, that's what the, right. What the hell are you You don't me? play craps right. <laughs> you shouldn't be up that much. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm always looking here thinking, when is he going to press? And you just keep <laughs> collecting and you win. And I, so, it's, it's like my press? wife. Every time she goes with me, she get two numbers. She takes a point and, you know, and place one number, yeah. the six or eight yeah. or whatever. Inevitably at the end, you know, she's up 200, $300 or something. I'm down two or 3000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Mike, she'll never be up, say 10,000, right? No. Okay. No. So there you go. Yeah, she'll All right. never I don't up. know when you and we'll I never be up forty thousand either. Yeah, I don't know when you and I are going to be playing craps again. It's up to you. Uh, start making plans. Blah blah blah. Yeah, every week I know. It's just that, so. so much going I on. I understand. I'm being beat up by a bunch of high schoolers, Mark. I understand. <laughs> I understand. Physically, emotionally, anyway. Oh, okay. A little yeah. physically. That can be but... worse. A little physically. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey. Thanks to everyone who's been clicking through our Amazon link. Remember, whenever you're going to buy something through Amazon, please go to our page first. You can bet on that.com and click through our Amazon link towards the top of the page. Let's move on to some voicemails. First up is Daniel. Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike. This is Daniel from Nashville. I was just calling with a trip to Bert to Las Vegas. Turns out I was there the same weekend you were. I flew it on Sunday the 3rd and flew out on the 6th. Didn't know you were there. I would have loved to meet up with you, but... Glad to hear that gambling went well. Uh, it also went well for me. I started my trip just like I do every trip. Uh, as soon as I land, I always go straight to uh, Frankie's Tiki Room for some strong rum drinks and some video poker. Uh, I'll tell you, there's nothing like being at Frankie's at 10 a.m. Also, shout out to the bartenders there, Olana and Tanya. They are the best in Las Vegas. Highly recommend. My games are typically craps and video poker, and uh, for the first day and a half, I couldn't win anything. It was terrible. I lost about half my bankroll. <laughs> But then the tides turned, and I hit my first four of a kind of the trip, which was great. Got me back up, and then about an hour later, I put 20 bucks into a random slot machine. I don't typically play slots, but I put 20 bucks into the slot machine and cashed out for 850. So things started to turn around. But then the highlight, I was meeting a buddy of mine that evening at, on the 4th at the Bacchanal Buffet at Caesars, and was sitting at that bar. There's a, I don't remember the name of it, but it's a round bar right outside of Bacchanal across from that Giada's Pastry Place. And I hit my first Royal Slash on video poker. I was playing single hand, double double quarters. And I didn't just hit a Royal Slash, I got dealt a Royal Slash. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't believe it. I was in shock. So that right there got me back up for the trip. And then went on to have a great meal at the Bacchanal Buffet. And then the next day, I walked in the morning down to Cromwell, sat at the video poker bar there. 
and I hit another royal flush. I've been gambling course. probably 10 years, <laughs> never hit a royal flush. I just hit two of them on, on the same trip. And it just stayed the same. I think I counted total. I hit nine, four of a kind. I got those two royal flushes. I played craps at Ellis and won another like $600. So it was just a phenomenal trip all around. Uh, I went out to Santa Fe Station and hung out downtown. I went to uh, my favorite breakfast place and coffee shop in Vegas called Publicus. It's downtown on the corner of Fremont, Maryland, close to Atomic Liquors. Highly recommend. Amazing place. Great staff. Great food. Uh, but yeah, just had a phenomenal trip. It was super fun. Had been there in about six or seven months. Best gambling trip I've ever had in Vegas. I came back home having completely covered all the expenses on my trip and then a good chunk of change and profit from it. So it was wonderful. So thank you guys. Love the show. I uh, hope to be back soon sometime around. Talk to you later. All right. Thanks, Daniel. The breakfast place he's talking about, it's kind of a weird name. It's Public Us. So public and then U.S. with the U capitalized. First Royal followed almost immediately by a second. That probably will happen to us. If either one of us eventually hits a Royal, we'll probably hit the second one within a day. You're saying it's like the fire bet. Yeah. We went all that time. We couldn't hit them all. And then we hit one and then wasn't too long. We hit another one. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like the Um, longest period of time was before the first one. (laughs) Yeah. I think you're delusional. Okay. Yeah. Because (laughs) just the fact that I'm saying when we hit our first Royal, right then, you know, I lost you. It's never happening. (laughs) You're going to have to start editing these voicemails so that there's nothing about hitting royals in there. <laughs> That's right. Every <laughs> time somebody goes well, I, I told them this story. Oh, I hit five royals in one <laughs> train. It was like a two-minute phone call. I was only on there for 10 seconds. Yeah, this is Joe from Orlando. Great show. Talk to you later. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I need to go to one of these tiki rooms. The problem is I usually go to Vegas with you, and why would we spend time in a tiki room? But rum is like my liquor. I'm not a big drinker anyway, but if I had to pick one. Yeah, you you like your rum. I'm like that. Sweet little Hawaiian drinks, Mai Tai, things like that. (laughs) (laughs) They're fancy and they're pretty. Yeah, they get umbrella. (laughs) All right. Next up is Dr. Mike. Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike. This is very long-time listener, first-time caller, East Coast Dr. Mike, and I'm calling in a trip report from the Hard Rock in Tampa. As you know, they just opened up table games, so I was able to play some craps and roulette down there. Just a little bit about the setup. They had about eight roulette tables and only three craps tables. The craps was $25 minimum everywhere. This was on a Tuesday night at about 6 p.m., And from what I understand, talking to the dealers, that's going to be the lowest the minimums will be. It sounds like they're trying to attract maybe a more prestigious or higher limit player, and that's why they didn't want to go down on the minimums. I bought in for $500 and cashed out with about 50 I probably would have brought more if I knew the minimums would be so high. But the interesting thing is when I went to the table, I noticed most people are not playing the pass by. And the table I went up to is a rowdy table. It seemed fun, but... There was only two people playing the pass line, and there was about eight people on the outside. Most were just placing numbers or field bets. It seemed like most people playing were pretty inexperienced as well as the dealers. They were messing out basic payouts, like they would only pay single payout to a two on the field instead of paying double, made mistakes like that. I did play some roulette. The interesting thing there was they had $5 minimum per chip, so you basically had to play $25 for five numbers, uh, $5 minimum. I didn't play too much roulette. I hit one number and then cashed out. Luckily, made all my money back playing Mississippi Stud. Mark, I don't know you're not the hugest fan of that game, but uh, it's one of my favorite games when I got a couple bucks just to play and ended up hitting uh, three of a kind on my very first hand, three kings, and made a nice little cash out, made uh, all my money back and more and decided to cash out there and go home. So anyway, guys, take care. Love watching the show or listening to the show and uh, hope to see you guys in a future trip. All right. Thanks, Dr. Mike. All right. Did I say that I didn't care for Mississippi Stud? If I ever did say that, my opinion has definitely changed. You know, when I went to Biloxi, not this year, but the previous year, I spent several hours by myself. Well, I mean, not with our group. It was a full table, just I wasn't with anybody that I knew. Playing Mississippi Stud, it's one of my favorite, well, certainly one of my favorite carnival games. (laughs) I'm laughing because you're by myself, and then you're trying to explain what 
by myself, man. Well, I mean, because <laughs> we all thought you were in the room, just all by oh, yourself. just dealing it to sitting, myself. Si- yeah, Yay! sitting in the shower on the Winner! floor, dealing Yay! yourself. <laughs> I just meant not with anybody I knew, because usually I gamble with people I know. I like though that he used a sense that's never been used ever in the history of man. Oh yeah. Fortunately, I was able to win all my money back at Mississippi Stud. <laughs> <laughs> that's a first, yeah. I'll give yeah, you that. That's a first. <laughs> well, thank you for the report on Florida craps and roulette, now that they have it, and it's spreading even more to some of those other seminal casinos. It might be, too, that a lot of people you know, are just going there to check it out. Yeah, I'm thinking that play. the minimums might then, eventually come down, and the style right. of play will evolve. Yeah, it's, it's so where, early yeah, right now. Yeah, they'll get players who actually know how to play, and yeah. it'll change, yeah. yeah. I agree. All right, last call. Hi, Mark and Dr. Mike. This is Nick in Kalamazoo with a Biloxi trip report. My wife and I went on a junket over Thanksgiving, so we actually left South Bend, Indiana Thanksgiving Day. Super small airport, nobody there. There's like nine gates or something, so you can go from car to gate in 20, 25 minutes but obviously not many people there for Thanksgiving. For those of you who have never been on a junket, it's usually a chartered aircraft, and usually for MGM, it's Sun Country. There's no tablets in front of you. It's not luxurious. They hand you like a bag of pretzels when you get on, and that's your snack, and they'll come through once with, you know, Coke, Diet Coke, Sprite, etc. cetera. Not, not a whole lot of options, but they fly you there. You get there. We had a room at the Bow. It's a nice time to be there. We always get the trolley hopper that goes around to all the casinos and get a two or three day pass however long we're going to be there. We had the buffet at the palace, which again is the best buffet. But on Thanksgiving, I think we waited two and a half hours because there's, there's not a whole lot to eat on Thanksgiving and we had to eat, right? Played a whole bunch of pie gal on this trip. A couple days at the palace, we sat there two, three, four hours just sitting playing pie gal and winning a little, losing a little, having a couple drinks, having a great time. We're also there during the game, Michigan, Ohio State, living here in Michigan, my wife going to Michigan State, going across the river from Ohio, despise Ohio State. So we got up early and got down to the sports bar to watch the game. I think we were there an hour or something early, sat there to play video poker and had some food. They were charging for many of the tables, especially if you were just coming to eat and not gambling. But it was a ruckus crowd, people cheering on both sides, a lot of fun to watch the game. It was great that it was close. Uh, And we got to deal with all that. I don't have any amazing crap stories. I did play quite a bit, but there wasn't a whole lot to talk about. But there was one instance, and it was the last night at the Beau Rivage, trying to play before we have to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and fly back to Kalamazoo. Get up to the table, look at everybody, and everybody is like, it's been rough. Like, it's a cold table. We're lucky if anyone hits a point. So I'm just place betting, losing some money. Yeah, maybe I should get going. And then I was like, well, I'll play one more shooter. This guy hasn't shot yet. And then this guy from another table walks up beside me, asked how it's been, and I just didn't say anything. Just I never know what to say. Uh, and this guy starts to shoot, and I'm just playing my place bets, and he takes $27 and puts it on the six. That's all the money he had left. And this guy starts to go on a roll. You know, he's hitting a couple points. He's pounding the eight, and I'm going slow press, right? One slot every press. I mean, we're making money. My eight by the end of the roll was at 210, which I never really get that high. I'm collecting black chips. And then he finally sevens out. I think he hit four or five points. He hit at least some of the all or tall. I don't think he hit the whole thing. I know he didn't hit the whole thing because we all looked over and looked at the guy who placed the six. And he's like, I didn't make any money. We're all like, wait a second. Did he roll that whole time? Four or five points and never hit a six. And by golly, he did not. Never hit the six. So they did not get the all. And they definitely didn't get the small. And we were just looking at each other like, how is that possible? I mean, he must have rolled 30, 35 minutes, you know, something good enough that we were pressing. And I made $1,200 on the roll or something like that. And the guy beside me who had $27 and places a six just kind of was like, I lost $27 in that roll. It was shocking. I felt bad for the guy. But it was just one of those weird rolls, man. You don't see it. The other thing is that at the bow has a pretty good poker room. But I will say it really depends on the table you're sitting at. I sat down at a table early on. Everyone has stacks, you know, seven, eight hundred dollars And before the flop, we're seeing like $50 bets. And I'm like, oh, I, like I just want to sit. I want to BS. I want to play with a couple hundred dollars, play a few hands, 
throw some money in the middle. And if I make something great, and if not, it was good entertainment, right? A lot cheaper than a craps table. But man, even with like pocket tens of like fifty dollars, that's a quarter of my stack. Am I really to risk that before I see a flop? It was aggressive. And then moving to another table where it was less aggressive and got to play and made a couple big hands, really testing the limits of my poker. I'm a casual player. I just wanted to have fun. So anyway, if you're going, there is a decent poker room at Beau Rivage. They have tournaments on the weekends. I think they have turbo tournaments. Just lots of stuff to do. Anyway, all in all, it was a good trip. Wife hit a decent jackpot. It was like 11.50, so no taxes that last day. Still down overall, but had a great time. Love going to Biloxi. Hopefully you guys get a chance to get out again. Thank you for listening to my rambling. I really appreciate the show. We're heading out to Detroit next weekend to go see a show over in Canada. So we'll be there for a couple days and I'll call back in. Thanks guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye. All right, Nick. Well, thank you and good luck on that trip. Mike, I'm trying to think back. The only junket that I've ever been on is that junket that you and I took to Elko. To Elko. A- am I yeah. forgetting another one, or have you ever been on a junket that I wasn't no, on? No, okay. I think that was the one time we did it. Yeah. And, well, I think the problem with that junket for both of us was it was pretty short. It was just like overnight. Well, it was short, and there was just that, what was it? It was like a it Red Lion like a, Inn casino yeah, or something, right? Yeah, it, it was, it was just like a, a, casino, a motel but, with a little yeah, casino yeah. room. And I, I think maybe, was there like one craps table, right? Yes. Uh huh. And yeah, that's yeah. all we had to play there the whole time. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of glad we did. I still get offers for junkets to Laughlin. And Uh to Reno from Caesars. I'm not really on MGM's radar. Do you get any offers for junkets where you live now? I've gotten several offers from Caesars to go to Laughlin. Oh, you get Laughlin ones too. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's about all I've gotten. But they seem to come fairly frequently, Laughlin ones. You know, if you get a Laughlin junket and you ever want to take advantage of it, it probably wouldn't coincide with the same time that my junkets are offered. Right, it's usually right. you know different airports, but right. if you ever come out, I'll meet you there. You know, I'll okay. drive over there, yeah. see ya. I, you know, we haven't been to Laughlin in a long, long, long time, long time, Mike. And I know you and um, I would love it because it's just gamble, gamble, gamble. Yeah, and I fit right in now with all those old folks. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I sure hope that hard eight comes up. I I got to go change my dialysis bag. <laughs> oh God! See, I. I'm waiting for you to make plans, Mike. I had to go to Vegas on my own yeah, right? this I know. last time with my poker buddies because I just got sick and tired of waiting for you to make plans. <laughs> I know. I know. Believe me. I think about that every day. Well, have you been out to gamble at all since our last no. episode? Yeah. No, I have not. I don't have much time. Yeah. I'm working and then I am running the scoreboard and everything for the basketball games, boys and girls, JV, varsity, sometimes even the ninth graders. And it just takes up all my time. It's just crazy how much (laughs) effort I'm putting into this and not into craps. Yeah. Yeah. People probably think I've died. I mean, I'm sure over at Diamond Joe, they think, oh, he was pretty old. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And our listeners are probably pretty disappointed in you too. It's like, yeah, yeah, Dr. Mike, in his heyday, he was something. He's not the man he used to be. (laughs) In 2024, things may change. All right, let's hope so. Well, yeah, short episode this time, mainly because, again, a lot of stuff going on with the holidays. We're busy, both Dr. Mike and I, and we're not getting as much feedback from listeners because I know you're all busy during this time of year. Yep, everyone's busy this time (laughs) of year. So hopefully by our next episode, Mike, you will have gone to Diamond Joe Worth, oh, half a dozen times, and maybe I'll uh, try going out to some of the casino. Oh, you know, we usually take my mom to the casino between Christmas and New Year's. I'll have to ask my sisters about that because this is the first time even thinking about it. So she's probably want to go. So I may have a report for you next time. No guarantees it'll depend on... You know her yeah. situation, but uh, yeah, how yeah. she's feeling. Well, I hope she gets to go. That I do would be too. Great. Yeah. All right. Well, we want to thank some people for some donations. Mike, did you get this donation from Trevor for your shoe drive? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I was going to send him a personal email when yeah. I finally get around to it, but that was awesome. Trevor. Yeah, it was a very generous donation. So yeah. thank you. Trevor, you are for the that. man. Yeah. You are the man, and uh, believe me, it was put to very, very good use. Yeah, that's great. Oh, we want to thank some people for some recurring donations to the show. Nathan, Brian Dancer, Brian and Sarah, 
Josh, and those guys over at Crap Vegas. Thank you very much yeah, for speaking those, of uh, Crap Vegas. Yeah, they had a little contest, and I guess the person who won, his name was Andrew. He donated the money to the school here. Oh, is that right? Oh, I didn't yes. know that. Uh-huh. Oh, that's yep. great. Yep. Oh, Chris well, had sent me a message oh. and said, hey, he wanted to, you know, just so Chris just Venmo to us and we put that money to good use too. Oh my and gosh. That was awesome. That is so great. Well, thank you, yep. Andrew. And thank you, Chris and Josh uh, right. for that. That's tremendous. Those guys are great. Yeah, they I really mean, are. honestly, yeah. they do so much. It's yeah. unbelievable. We also got a donation from listener Scott. He said a Lake Charles trip coming up. Didn't say exactly when, so hopefully good luck on that, or hopefully you did have good luck. We also got a donation from Kyle. Karma donation for a trip with my wife to Vegas in January. We'll be staying in Paris for three days and are looking forward to playing craps, poker, and going to see Absinthe for the first time. Oh, well, have a great trip. We have not seen Absinthe. It gets universally great scores from people go to see it. They say, you know, as long as you're not easily offended, you're going to love that show. So, again, good luck on your trip, Kyle. And finally, a donation from our good friend Kevin. Your 2024 Craps Starter Kit. Thanks for the great content. (laughs) Oh, well, thank you for that, Kevin. We're ready. Kevin's probably wondering, where is Dr. Mike? Yeah, that's right. He's (laughs) he's thinking, (laughs) this is going to get him to come out finally. (laughs) Yeah, and it will. No. (laughs) Hey, at the top of our webpage, you'll find a link to our store where you can buy You Can Bet On That t-shirts. Also, you can find a list of all the gambling-related shows coming up on American television at youcanbetonthat.com slash tv-listings. Let me just pause here for a second to say the website that I use to get the famous raw American TV data, the lineup kind of changed, and it threw off my self-written script that runs through all that data. And so I haven't updated the page recently, and I'm having to kind of redo how I do things. So if you see some dormant TV listings there for a while, that's why. Don't worry, I'll get back on it as soon as I have some time. And we've got a list of gambling-related movies at youcanbetonthat.com slash movies. We'd love to hear from you. Call our voicemail hotline at 951-292-4377. That's 9512-WAGERS. 9512-WAGERS. Or you can email us at youcanbetonthat at gmail.com. We're also on Twitter at youcanbetonthat and on Facebook at facebook.com slash youcanbetonthat. Mike, what do you got for us here on this wonderful Christmas? I would like to say, Mark, that I hope everybody has a wonderful Christmas or whatever holiday they're celebrating. I hope they're all having fun and healthy and they're happy and they're enjoying their families. And I was thinking earlier today, wouldn't it be great if humans were like dogs? All right. I uh, keep going. Well, it just personality wise, my two dogs. Yeah. Every time somebody comes home, they're so excited. Yeah. They run around and they jump on you and they're just happy. And I come downstairs here to do the podcast, right? They're both sitting here right on the edge of the steps, staring at me like, oh, I hope he finishes soon. Let's go back upstairs. You know, and when I sit down, I'm watching football. They're both cuddling me. They're just full of love. Yeah. I mean, you and I are both dog people for sure. You know, we love our dog. I mean, I know there's some dogs that can be mean or whatever, but. Most or that dogs whine. are just full of love. People some dogs whine. Like that. Just, eh, yeah, pay attention sometimes to me. they whine. Ours, our, eh, somebody's at yeah, the door. Ours aren't too bad eh. about that. And our one dog, our youngest, Stag, he, he's a little goofy, yeah. but he is so loving. And the thing about him I love the most, and just think about this on Christmas, every time he goes out, it doesn't matter if it's 60 or minus 20 outside, he runs out, he goes through this whole routine, does his business, He runs back to the door and, you know, looks at me like, okay, open the door, open the door. I open the door and he runs through the house full speed. Yeah. Circles around the dining room, the kitchen, and the living room. Just Just this big circle, full speed. And then goes over to the couch and collapses. So glad to be back inside. Yeah, so glad. Just everything's a joy to him. And that's the way it should be with people. All right, folks. Try to be more like dogs. More like dogs. Just enjoy every moment that you're given. All right. Thanks, everybody. We will talk to you next year. Have great holidays.
Okay, let's thin this herd. Untucked shirt, no thank you. Born in San Diego, yikes. An adult named Todd? So, this is what online dating is like? 